This is Gary Penny, also known as GP. Gary used to be my old group Iron Man account her normal account over a year ago and in that process I cleaned out the entire account leaving Gary with zero GP to his name. But as they say the comeback is always greater than the setback so in this series Gary Penny will rebuild with the ultimate end goal of achieving a max cash stack. For the past few episodes in the Gary Penny journey, we have been locking ourselves into one or two big grinds at a time. But today, we are going to try a bunch of different money makers, starting with the Phantom Muspa, which is making a return from episode 1 and for a very good reason. Starting off this episode with a bank of 823 million, and let's go ahead and gear up for the Phantom Muspa. I would say one of the biggest investments we're doing on this account for a very long time. We're going to be buying a saturated heart for over 100 million GP, 111 million. And when you click on this, it boosts me all the way to 111 magic. If we hit 99 magic, of course, that's 112. And it is absolutely insane at the Phantom Muspa or any place where you use magic. We have also invested in some Virtus items and our setup overall compared to the first episode is quite a lot stronger. But the main reason why we are doing the Phantom Muspa again is the price of the Venator shards. These are currently worth 13 million each and are a 1 in 100 drop rate and in episode 1 they were only worth 9 million. Absolutely horribly rusty first KC, 4 minutes 23. Even though I screwed up so many things on this, look how much food I've used. That was only 30 seconds of personal burst, so yeah, hopefully we can speed it up by quite a lot with this setup if I get a bit more into it. Okay, second kill coming in and that felt a lot faster. 3.56, 1 second of personal burst. And a pretty good drop on top of it. That did not take too long. First elite clue scroll of the grind. I'm going to just keep this in the bank. And we're only going to be doing one clue scroll of each from each grind we're doing. Otherwise, I might be doing clue scrolls all video long. After actually just doing a video on the Desert Treasure 2 bosses, getting all of the quartz, we get the Ancient Icon. I never got this when I did the Phantom Muspa in the beginning of this series. But now we have one of them so we can make the upgraded Ancient Scepter. Oh my god, I was not recording, and we have the first Venator Shard! It's down to 10 or 11.6 million GP. So it is dropping in value a bit, but come on, that is uh, finally the first Venator Shard of the grind. That's a lot of money. Judging by the time left on my potions, this might be the first sub 3 minute kill, which is actually kind of massive. Yes, it is, because that awards you with a charged ice every single time. This item, if you have the pet, is used on it to let it metamorphosize into the different faces of the boss. Of course, we don't have the pet, so not very useful right now. A question I get quite often is, are you still doing your herb runs? And the answer to that is absolutely I am. And we just hit over 10,000 toad flax. And the price of toad flaxes are actually going up in price. So the stonks are actually increasing just having them in my bank. And that is now 100 KC on the Phantom Muspa in this video, done and dusted. This is everything we've got so far, and that is a stunning 220,000 GP per kill. We have also gained nearly 75,000 Ancient Essence, and I think I'm going to keep doing this until I hit 100,000 Essence and then jump into something different. After 141 KC, I think this is the last Ancient Essence. Let's go ahead and go to a bank and check if it is. And yes, it is. 100,000. Ancient Essence loot up at 22.7 million GP. But before we sell everything, let's open some caskets and some frozen caches. The loot within the frozen caches are the same as the Phantom Muspa's drop table, and you can also even get a Venator Shard as a 1 in 500 drop, so there is chance to make a lot of money here. Let's begin with a hard Clue Skull casket, no master for this one, and it's worth 70k. Elite one is a master Clue Skull, 188k. But before we do the master, Let's go ahead and go through these really quickly and let's see if we can manage to get a Venator Shard. It is very rare, but so far it's actually been pretty good loot as well, just with the Dragon item. No Venator Shard. All the clues and the Frozen Caches ended up being 1.6 million. Not bad. Already on the first step, I can't do the Master. That is unfortunate. For 141 Muspa, making 23.3 million GP is actually not that bad. Let's go ahead and add it all to the bank and we are now at 841 million. Next grind up requires us to go deep into the water birth island venturing all the way down this 
ladder to the Dagonoth Kings. These bosses drop the Seer's Ring, Archer's Ring, Warrior's Ring, and Berserker Ring, ranging from 80,000 GP all the way to nearly 5 million GP. While we're having a through the wall staring contest with this Walla Salki, this is going to be the gear setup we use for Dagon of Kings. A bit of a mix because it is a tribrid boss. We have to use melee, ranged, and magic. But luckily, the magic boss has no magic defense, so you can actually kill this with basically no magic gear except just a decent weapon. And for ranged, of course, the bow of Faradinen always is a solid choice. We got the Dagon of Kings set up, and also I didn't mention we do have a Saradomin God Sword, which we can use the special attack on the Spinal Lips and actually heal quite a lot and get prey points back. Imagine getting spooned on the first one. Ah, not quite. If you want to make the most out of Dagon of Kings, make sure you have the Fremenic Elite Diary completed, which I do not have because you need 77 at minimum runecrafting to get it. But if you do have it, all of these Dagon of Bones will actually be noted and they are worth 9.5k. So if you're going to be killing a lot of Dagon of Kings, getting the Elite Diary is definitely worth it. Ah uh, yes, the Ring of Life, the same drop rate as all the other rings, but worth considerably less. Oh no way, already on 17 overall Dagonoth Kings, Archer's Ring, the second most valuable one, only beaten by the Berserker Ring. Not bad. And that will be it for the first Dagonoth King trip. I have definitely learned a bit. I can swap some stuff for my gear setup and bring way more super stores. I didn't even have to use my Saradomian brew, but we downed around 50 Dagonoth Kings on the first trip. Definitely also don't have to use blood spells at all. I thought I would need the healing, but my blood amulet of fury and my Saradomian god sword is keeping me up well above what I need. Oh, very nice. I was actually waiting for this. We have the first circle, the same drop rate as a ring as well. Pretty much every item here has the same drop rate, one in 128. This one is only 50k. Well, I guess it had to happen eventually. The first warrior's ring, this one drops from Rex, which also drops the berserker ring, being the most expensive ring. Oh, let's go. Another archer's ring and never say no to 3.8 million again. As we are finishing up another trip here, killing Rex being one of the last rings I'm missing. We're missing Berserker Ring, unfortunately none this time, and the Sears Ring. And I think the goal for this grind is going to be to get every single ring at least once. So as soon as we see a Sears Ring and a Berserker Ring, we are done. If you watched my last episode, we actually got very close to hitting 99 strength on the Duke grind from Desert Treasure 2 bosses, but we are now finishing that off, and that is 99 strength. We have finally reached the maximum potential for our melee combat style. Yes, we have the Sears ring! It's only 567k. Why is this so low valued? Thinking about how the Tumic and Shadow was recently kind of released, I feel like this would be worth more now because it's actually really good. But that means we're only missing the Berserker ring. We have another Sears ring. We are inching closer to 1000 Dagonoth Kings killed, so would love to see that Berserker ring soon, honestly. After this Rex, we are hitting 1000 Dagonoth Kings and we still have not seen the Berserker Ring, but this is also the Dagonoth King that can drop it, so can we get it, please? That is not a Berserker Ring. Yes, we did it! That is the Berserker Ring, it's almost 5 million GP. You know what though, I have a lot of supplies I just got here, so I'm just going to finish off the trip and uh, maybe we can even get another Berserker Ring, you never know with these. Not a Berserker Ring, but an Archer's Ring, nearly as good, 3.6 million, it was definitely worth to stay and it's at the end of this trip as well, so... I was worried it wasn't going to be worth it, but it was. Can we get anything good from the clues? Hard One has a master already, and the Elite 177k, not too bad. This time the master could be completed, so let's go ahead and open it, and we get a Robe of Darkness, a Robe Top of Darkness, 313k, not too bad, looks pretty good as well. But here is the loot tab, we got 11 dragon axes, I never really show those because as you can see you get a lot of them and it's worth 20.6 million, so let's go ahead and sell everything. And there we go, 20.2 million after GE taxes and everything, not too bad. Next up, the wilderness just had a big slayer update, adding the undead pirates and increasing the population of monsters and speeding up the spawn timers of them inside of the wilderness slayer cave. Monsters in the wilderness also have an additional loot table with fairly valuable items, making it the most profitable way to train slayer. So let's buy some wilderness friendly gear and hop over the ditch. 
And of course, as we're going to be doing a lot of Slayer, we need the Slayer Helmet for that 15% damage boost. So let's go ahead and also imbue it at the Nightmare Zone. This helmet cost me roughly 800,000 to make, so not too bad. But this is the gear we're going to be using. We have the Ursine Chain Maze for melee tasks, and any task that I can Ice Barrage, I have the Accursed Scepter. A lot of tasks in the Wilderness are barrageable for insane experience and kills per hour, so probably most of the tasks will be magic. And if we discount for the cannon, which is worth like 500,000, we're only really risking around 400k if you also include the ether from the weapons, so it's really not that bad if I do end up dying. I remember this task being absolutely terrible of dark warriors having to run around in the castle and kill them one by one, but now because they've added so many more monsters and increased their spawn time to like 7 seconds baseline on every creature, I can just barrage them here in the middle with a cannon and complete the task in no time. Another big thing they did is boost the loot table of Scorpia, I think Chaos Elemental and maybe some other boss as well. And now that I picked up a Scorpion Slayer task, I'm going to be doing it on Scorpia. Every time we get a Slayer task where I can technically kill one of the Wilderness bosses, I will do it. I could actually complete the entire Slayer task in one single trip and that is the task done. Let's go ahead and check the loot. One task was worth 1.5 million GP and half of the kills was actually not on Scorpia, just cleaving some of the minions. That is insanely good. Good. Before the loot rework, that would have been like 300k. Now that's what I'm talking about, 117k extra money just for doing Slayer in the Wilderness. That is of course on the special loot table and just extra income. And that is definitely not the most expensive item you can get there. And of course, we have the Larence keys as well, the first one coming in right now. And we are going to open them all at the end for the chest, instead of just selling them at the GE. On a task of 15 Black Dragons, we end up getting the first Trover Parchment Drop. You get two each time, they're like 500k each. And these are actually pretty damn rare. It's the most expensive item from the Slayer loot table as well. They do become more common with the higher level monsters, so Black Dragons is one of the more common ones, but it's still one in like 1.2 thousand to get these. It's time to head over to Elder Chaos Druids because we got a task of 89 where we're also going to be killing some undead pirates and for that we need the teleport anchoring scroll because I don't want to get spam teleported around in that area it is absolutely miserable so let's just go ahead and learn it 1.3 million is a very low cost to pay for this. There is actually three tasks that allows me to go to this area and kind of AoE farm both the Elder Chaos Druids and the undead pirates. That is the Chaos Druid task, pirates task and zombie tasks and because of the insane money these undead pirates actually give for how low level they are this is always a great place to go to for money i mean that took like no time at all and my looting bag is 1 million gp it's not even filled either oh my god finally we have the first superior i've had so many tasks that actually could give me superiors i just never got them in the wilderness you always get a larynx key from these so they're guaranteed like 120k profit but they also of course can drop an imbued heart no way, what are the odds, man? A peak here coming right when I get my first appear and it's about to die. Okay, well, I guess I don't have much of a choice. No imbued heart, but that's the Larin's key. Actually, a good amount of good stuff there. Wilderness Crab teleport as well. I don't even know if I can escape this at all. There's actually two people chasing me, but I froze one of them and the other one was very far away. So I might actually get a gap here. Please just let me log out. I want this Larence key so badly. Don't land a f Yes, nice. Now that is a very interesting task. 77 skeletons, that allows me to do the first Void Waker related boss, which is going to be Calvarian. Now because this boss spawns 4 skeletal hounds every single time, that also counts for the task, I only ended up getting 13k on the actual boss until the task was done, but 350k from the looting bag and didn't really get anything too massive, and 140k for Sandfew Serums at the end is not that bad. I was not recording, that is 90 Slayer, I did not expect that. The Slayer skill is so slow to level, I didn't even think about the levels. But of course, that is really good to get up, because there's some really good money makers later on in the Slayer levels. An absolutely monumental milestone coming up here with 99 magic, and not only does this of course increase my DPS, I get access to one of the best quality of life upgrades on the entire account so far. And of course the next course of action is to actually purchase it for only 99k, the best 99k spent ever on this account. And how it works is that you basically click on it, spellbook, and you can swap it 5 times every single day. 2 out of 3 down for the Wilderness Void Waker bosses, that is 86 RTO, let's get to it. The way I'm going to be killing RTO is very very simple, protecting from melee, AFKing and just casting Blood Barrage and I basically out heal all the damage. 
I do have to say, not a very eventful task. It was extremely AFK and chill to do though, because not a single PKR attacked me, which is kind of crazy at RTO. But this is all the loot. We managed to make 4 million GP, which is definitely a very good task. But that is the final one. We actually managed to get 80 spiders, and that is Venonatis or Spindle. And for this one, as it is the last one, we are actually going to be doing Venonatis. Venonatis, of course, being the bigger and badder version of Spindle, and also being located in a multi combat area with also a harder time to escape because it is over 30 wilderness. It is better loot, but if a team comes in here, I am 100% dead. Oh, that only took 7kc, and uh, well, this is what I'm talking about. If a team like this comes in, I get frozen, I'm just 100% guaranteed dead. It's best to just make sure I have protect item on and die. But this drop right here is exactly why I wanted to do Venonatis over Spindle. This is not even rare, and it's 1.3 million GP, so with the risk comes definitely higher rewards. Well, uh, that is a dragon two-handed sword. It is uh, not super rare actually to get these. It is also a collection log slot, so I guess I'll take it, just not very valuable. I'm going to be honest, this is the final kill of the grind and I have died probably seven times by now, losing like 500k every single time. And okay, that is making up for some of those deaths. I've lost like 3.5 million so far, but this is all the loot that we got from the task, so we still made a lot of profits here. But I think that's a good stopping point for the Slayer grind. We have some caskets to open before we open all the keys that we collected, the beginner one being 2000 GP, hard one being 55k, and the elite being, oh, 600k, a unique and also a master. Sadly, the master was not completable, but let's now jump into the zombie keys right away. We have 20 to open. And we are down to the last one. Let's go ahead and check the looting bag. We got nothing too rare, so I don't think this is going to be super valuable, but let's have a look. 400k, that's actually not bad from 20 keys. It is now time for the Larens keys. We have 55 of them, so first round is going to be 25 and the next one 30. Don't want to risk them all in one run, but let's go ahead and open it and hopefully get some Dagon High pieces. Okay, finishing up the first trip and we put those into the looting bag and let's have a look. The first keys were 3 million GP. And I do actually think the value of the keys I just used was almost exactly 3 million. So we actually don't even lose GP on this. And if we do get a Dagon High piece, it is profit. And let's finish off the last 30 keys. It seems like we're not getting a Dagon High piece. No, we did not end up getting one. And the keys this time, the 30 keys were worth 3.3 million and the loot we got was worth 4.1. So actually profiting instead of just selling them but this is what my entire slayer loot tab looks like quite juicy but let's go ahead and sell everything everything basically sold for its price but let's add it all to the bank and we're now at 873 million bank but wilderness slayer is not the only activity that recently had changes another one is the skilling boss Salcano located in Priftinus. the minimum requirement of downing the boss three times before being able to defeat it has been removed making it way faster to rack up kc however you now have to choose between getting good experience or loot and of course, as this is a money-making series, we are picking resources over experience. Now, when it comes to gear setup, I definitely am missing a couple of things. None of them really matter that much, most of it being graceful, and I just have to bring more stamina potions because of it. It's actually insane how much better it feels to do Solcano now with the three down limit removed completely. So if you have enough people, you can actually down the boss in just one single round of destroying its shield and then mining it. Just for one KC, I actually picked experience instead of loot now, and you should see an experience drop right now when the boss dies instead of loot. Let's see, 2200 mining experience. Not too bad, but of course I'm going back to loot, but that is kind of interesting. If you really want to try mining, this might be a pretty decent way of doing it. When it comes to the loot of Solcano, it's mostly runes, ores, bars, all that kind of stuff. But you can also get a crystal tool seed, which is worth 14 million GP, but has a 1 in 200 drop rate per kill of the boss. So if you are 5 people doing the boss, it is a 1 in 1000 basically for you specifically to get it so it's kind of rare 
I have some stats to give you guys. This KC is number 100 of the grind, and we have been getting roughly one kill every three minutes in four man teams. This is all the loot for 100 kill counts, which means we have got 52,000 GP per kill and around 20 kills an hour. That is only really a 1 million GP an hour, which is actually kind of horrendous. So let's hope we actually get the tool C to make up for it. Dude, what is this? I was MVP. You can see that by getting the Infernal Ashes. And I'm in a four-man, which is like the optimal for money. And I get 23k GP. I mean, the crystal shards are good, but the money is just not great. I did my best. I gave it a shot. I've now been here for over 10 hours killing Solcano. And this is KC number 200. It's going to be the last one. And that is why. I mean, Cosmic Runes for MVP as well, 35k. This is all the loot that we got. It's like 44,000 GP per kill or something. Pretty horrendous, but this is where we're going to be ending it. All the loot from Solcano has been sold. Let's go ahead and collect everything. And we managed to get just below 9 million GP after the cut. But we managed to get 444 crystal shards. Which is 44,000 charges for my bow for Adina. So that is definitely a big upside to this grind. Even if the money wasn't great. And now if we chuck that into the bank. We have an overall value of 878 million to end the video. And that means we gained 55 million profit in this video which is not that bad for all the different activities we did and we didn't really get anything too massively rare. In this episode we took on two reworked activities, the Wilderness Slayer and Salcano. And in the next episode we are taking on yet another reworked activity. And it is going to be an absolutely massive one with insane money potential. So stay tuned for that.